Hi, I'm Mark Frazier. In the insect world, there are many incredible species to be found, some of which actually mimic other species. Now, there's one insect in particular called the hummingbird moth that looks so much like a hummingbird, you won't even be able to tell them apart unless you look really close. Join me on today's exciting episode of Nature Walks. In the natural world, survivability is directly related to adaptability. And there's perhaps no greater example of just what that means than the world's smallest bird. Now hummingbirds adapted to be this tiny because they're taking advantage of nectar. Think of all the predators out there. So speed matters as well. Their wings beat over 80 times per second. Absolutely incredible. You can't even see them flapping. As a matter of fact, you can only hear them, which is where they get their hummingbird name from the humming sound made by their incredible wings. This also allows them to hover at each flower to take advantage of the nectar just like an insect. Another amazing adaptation is the flowers themselves. Their beautiful bright colors are no accident. They want to be able to be seen from the distance. See for a flower, they need to be pollinated by an insect or in the case of a hummingbird, a bird. But to do that, they need to draw them in. Now in the case of the insects, they don't want all this attention. Unless they're toxic, then they'll have bright colors. But if they're not toxic, the best that they can do is be camouflaged like this beautiful moth. It's sitting on the white petals on a raspberry bush. This way from the distance, a bird sitting atop a tree would look down and think it's just a flower and not even realize that there's a potential male sitting there. That's a completely different adaptation than what you'll find with toxic insects who want to be bright colored and stand out. This way the predators see them and say, uh-uh, I've had a bad experience, I should leave that one alone. Now today, we're searching for a species that uses mimicry. It actually imitates a bird. Just imagine an insect imitating a hummingbird. Searching for the hummingbird moth is best done along a wild meadow where there's wildflowers. They'll fly along looking for just the right flower they're looking for to get the nectar that they need to survive. The humming sound from their wings is so close to a hummingbird that you really will do a double take. It was sound, not sight, that led me to this beautiful example of mimicry in the natural world. I'm trying to use my hand for scale because they're tiny just like a hummingbird. Look at the wing beat and the behavior of this beautiful moth. As long as I move slow and cautiously, they won't even be bothered by my hand being nearby for scale. They look so much like a hummingbird from a few feet away that you can't even tell them apart. They sound so much like a hummingbird that you'll think that that's what you're looking at until you get a really close look. Now those wings flap over 30 times a second. Their flying technique is just like a hummingbird and they're actually very hard to film because of that, bouncing from one flower to the next. But with still photography, we can appreciate just how stunningly beautiful this species really is. Like other moths, they use a proboscis instead of a beak like the hummingbird. Now this smaller moth seems to be shooing away this hummingbird moth away from the flower, which is incredible. It actually reminds me of a sparrow chasing a hawk. Even with slow motion videography, it's very difficult to see those wings. Let's compare an actual hummingbird to the hummingbird moth. Just imagine one is a bird and one is an insect. Absolutely stunning. Now I've heard that this is an example of convergence. What that means is two unrelated species actually evolved to look similar due to their habits. But as far as I'm concerned, this is clearly an example of mimicry. They get a benefit from looking like a hummingbird. No doubt they have their predators, but I'm sure there are cases where one of the would-be predators looks over and thinks it's a hummingbird and don't even bother trying. Now that's particularly important with this species because remember, they're finding food during the daylight and they're not camouflage nor toxic. Now as much as they have in common with true hummingbirds, there are some vast differences. Remember, these are insects. So a wild ruby-throated hummingbird, for example, can live anywhere from five to even nine years in the wild. Well, the little hummingbird moth only lives from three to four weeks. So those big, large eyes need to find food very quickly. The females actually attract the males with pheromones released from their abdomens. A still image identifies the pair as hummingbird clear wing moths. It's very easy to see why people can mix up 
a bird and an insect when you compare the two species in flight. I often reflect on the countless millions of years that have gone by where relationships between plants, insects, and animals have taken place. What were the first hummingbirds like? Have they always gone after nectar, or did they start off with insects and then eventually drink some of the nectar found on flowers and then decide that maybe that was a better food source? Imagine that the hummingbird clearwing moth can fly at almost 30 miles an hour, flying along with those huge beautiful eyes, looking for nectar. What a stunning thought. I wonder how they react to each other when a hummingbird and a hummingbird moth fly side by side. All I know is this was an absolutely amazing species to get to explore on this nature walk. The thought of an insect that looks so much like a bird that you can hardly tell them apart. As fascinating as they are, I need to let them be. They have short lifespans and I want to give them a chance to move on. So they take off in flight to head to parts unknown looking for that next flower on their journey of life. The hummingbird clearwing moth is another fine example of the incredible things we can find when we take the time to explore with our hearts and minds wide open. Thank you so much for joining me on this nature walk. I'm Mark Frazier and I'll see you again real soon. The incredible thing about wildlife is the closer you look, the more you find. Thank you so much for joining me on this nature walk. I'm Mark Frazier and I'll see you again very soon.